and welcome to Christchurch Peter Maritzburg's Church Online. Our Father, we come this morning thankful that we can approach you, and we come thankful that you've shown us your mercy and grace, and that you've adopted us as your children, and children who you want to have fellowship with. Father, we acknowledge that it is not our good works that qualify us, but your mercy and grace. Only you can forgive us if we confess our sins, because your son Jesus has paid the price in our place, and we thank you for this. Father, we this time find it strange not to be able to meet together as your children, to be able to encourage one another, to love one another and to care for each other. But we ask that you would help us to find ways to still be able to do this for each other. We thank you that we can still hear your word preached and are able to study it on our own. And we ask that you would help us to spend our time wisely doing this. Help us also to be wise in the way we interact with others at this time, not to be irresponsible or fearful. We pray for those who've been ill with the virus, that you would heal them and bring them back to full health soon. We think particularly of, of Clive and uh, more recently for Rebecca Cooper, who's in hospital, and we ask that you would be close to them. And Father, we pray for the families who have recently lost loved ones, we ask that, that you would help them to know your presence and your peace at this time. Then, Father, we pray for the leaders of our church. We ask that you would give them wisdom and peace with the decisions that they have to make at this time, not being able to do things as they normally would and as they've been taught in colleges. And Father, we believe that you are in control of all things. Help us not to be discouraged by the things we see around us, but to rest in the knowledge that you have your own plans and nothing we do can, can alter that. Help us to know that you are a big God who has our best interest at heart and that nothing can happen that you have not decreed or allowed. Father, we pray also for our country and particularly for the leadership. We ask that you would help them to have servant hearts that desire the best for all the citizens of this country. We ask that you would remove those who are not following your agenda so that we can see the country going forward in a way that pleases you. Then, Father, we ask that you would speak to us through the preaching of your word. Help us to be encouraged or to be challenged and to be willing to change and be obedient if necessary. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to join us in our annual Thanksgiving. Again, this year you are given the opportunity to give Thanksgiving gifts as the Lord leads and as you are able as an additional financial gift. This is a way that you can tangibly give thanks to God even in the middle of what has been an upside down year. Our Thanksgiving gifts are used for ministry needs at Christ Church Peter Maritzburg. 10% is set aside as a bonus for our missionaries and 10% is given to reach South Africa who invest this in ministry needs throughout our denomination. Our Thanksgiving target for 2020 is 220,000 Rand. We encourage you to please give via EFT where possible. Please use reference TX or Thanksgiving in your transfer. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold than much pure gold, 
they are sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. This is the word of God. The Bible is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most sold book in history. It has sold well over 5 billion copies, well clear of the next best sold book that comes in at 500 million. Outside of published books, the Bible is also one of the most accessed resources online, normally to access a few select verses. It is this book that has taken primary spot in many households. Likely, many of you will find that you have multiple copies on your own bookshelves. But sadly, often, it is there on the shelf that the Bible stays. It never gets read, at least not regularly. And it often does not have the opportunity to soak into your mind and heart as you pour through its pages. A quote worth remembering, the Bible is meant to be bread for daily use not cake for special occasions. Yet it is this very Bible that has the power to bring hope when you feel hopeless and purpose when you feel worthless. It is this book that has the ability to bring wisdom to your thinking and calmness to your busy mind. It is in a crazy pandemic hit world that we can turn to its pages and find true hope that endures the brokenness we see around us. And it is this book, the Bible, that I would like to encourage you to commit to studying regularly in 2021. Would you grab hold of God's word this year? But why? Why should we value this book above all others? Why should you invest time into studying the Bible? What is God's Word? The Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, gives us some direction as to what the Bible, God's Word, is. In 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17, we read that all Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The idea of breathing life into something is one that speaks of someone taking something and pouring their time and energy into that one thing, breathing their life and soul into making whatever it is that they are doing. If an artist breathes life into their art, or a chef breathes life into the preparation of quality food, an architect pours their energy into creating buildings that reflect their ambitions and characteristics. It is through these works that people come to know the person behind the art or the architect behind the building's design because those things stamp the mark onto it of who the person is that made it. And so it is with the Bible. It is God breathed. He has poured himself into the pages so that through them we may come to know him. And in the statement, we find the key elements of what God's Word is. Through it, we come to see that God's Word is God-breathed, essentially saying it is given by God. It is His very Word written from God to us. Therefore, in its pages, we can expect to find information that directs us to the understanding of who God is and how He works and what He expects from us. It is through the Bible that God most clearly reveals his heart to us. But as Paul continues, he says, not only does it reveal God's heart, but the Bible is the means by which God reveals our own hearts. It is through the Bible that God corrects our thinking and the way that we live out our lives. It is through the Bible that his followers are shaped to better serve him and others. It is through God's spoken word that we see the world having been created. It is through God's spoken word that mankind came into being. God's word is powerful and his word remains equally powerful even when printed on paper with ink. It is through his word that life is given and that lives are transformed. What is God's word? 
God's word, the Bible, is his message of hope written to you, revealing his heart and shaping your own. So why then should you grab hold of God's word? Sailors of centuries past were tough men. Not much got them scared. But you will often read of situations where the sea suddenly changed. No longer was the sea calm, storm clouds rolled in, the sky began to grow dark, and they had little way to navigate the dangers of the coastline that these ships sailed alongside. In these moments that could prove fatal, these toughened sailors often grew fearful. Fully aware that their ships were little match for the rocks and sandbanks that were all around. And then, in the middle of the storm, a beam of light would shine. A light that brought hope. A light that brought safety, allowing them to navigate around the dangers that lay just below the stormy water. For those fearful sailors, that light meant life. Psalm 119 verse 105 has the psalmist speaking of God's word and he says the following, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. We live in a world that is stormy. The pandemic hit world that we are currently living in is one that shows just how stormy this world is to navigate. Yet it is in God's word that you find that lighthouse that shines its beam of light in this dark world. It is in the storms of life's uncertainty, when your job is suddenly less secure, when finances are uncertain, that God's word shines its light of eternal purpose and gives you certainty of God's enduring presence. It is in the storm of life, when a loved one is lost to death, or where you face the uncertainty of health setbacks yourself, that God's word shines its light of enduring life, secured by God. It is in the storms of life, when you feel beat down, cast out, lonely and hurting, that God's word shines its light of affirmation, where God assures you of the great value you have to him. It is in the storm of life, when you are unsure of the future, uncertain of the direction to follow, that God's word shines its light of wisdom that directs you in God's truth and equips you to live as he leads. It is in the storm of life that we find a beam of light, the word of God bringing hope for all situations. We grab hold of God's word because it is hope, ultimately hope that offers guidance in the one thing that matters most. God's plan of salvation for you and me. As we page through God's word, his message that reveals his heartbeat for us, we see the brokenness of our own hearts. But we are not left in the brokenness because God through his word reveals the only way our broken hearts can be restored. And as we see the restoration offered, we come to see the great value there is in grabbing hold of God's word. Ships and yachts all have a lifeboat on board. Often you will find that in the lifeboat there are medical supplies, but importantly there is a source of food and water. Our bodies need sustenance, and importantly our bodies need fresh water to stay hydrated. Without food and especially water, we quickly find ourselves in grave danger. There would be little value in being in a lifeboat with medical supplies but no food or water. Without food or water, you'd very quickly discover that you may not survive the days it may take for a rescue boat to pick you up. Jesus, when in the desert, being tempted by Satan, found himself being tempted to use his power as creator God to turn stones into food so that he would not be hungry. And Jesus replies in Matthew 4.4 4 by saying, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In this answer, Jesus draws on the word of God to answer Satan. He quotes scripture using the words of Deuteronomy 8. 
And there we see that in their hunger, when the Israelites in the desert grumbled, God provided manna for them. They needed food, and God provided. But he also instructed them to gather only what they needed and to trust that he would continue to provide. God's word and trusting in that word alone brings growth, an enduring, fulfilled spiritual life. There would be little point to living a wonderfully fulfilled life physically here on earth, only to die and to discover that life eternal has been lost. God's word offers enduring hope that gives direction to life today and builds faith in his promise of life eternal with him forever. The value you gain by grabbing hold of God's word is that you are made complete. As you dig in its pages, you receive direction. You grow in your faith. You are convicted of things in your life that are damaging both for you personally and your walk with the Lord. Your thinking is corrected. You are trained in righteousness. You are equipped to serve God and others. You grow in maturity and wisdom. You gain strength to endure. I'm pretty sure you can very likely find many more things that you gain by holding on to the Word of God. A.W. Tozier wrote the following, The Word of God, well understood and religiously obeyed, is the shortest route to spiritual perfection. And we must not select a few favorite passages to the exclusion of others. Nothing less than the whole Bible can make a whole Christian. The Bible is God's word, revealing himself to us and showing us the plan he has to bring us back into relationship with himself. The Bible is God's word that shines the light of hope into the darkness that threatens us all around. The Bible is God's word that cuts to the heart, that restores us to life and brings us understanding of our true value. It is through the Bible that you come to firstly see the lengths to which God would go to call you to turn to him again. And then it is through the Bible that we are made complete and continually drawn closer to God himself. You may find yourself coming into 2021 feeling battered and bruised, worried and hurting. You may find yourself coming into 2021 feeling, hey, life is not that bad. I can do this. Well, regardless of where you may find yourself at the start of this new year, I'd like to encourage you to commit in 2021 to be digging into God's word. Would you commit yourself today to doing the following? Firstly, dedicate time every week to reading through God's Word. Pick it up and just read. This does not need to be a regimented 30-minute Bible reading slot every single day. It can be a 10-minute break away from the kids. It might be 15 minutes over lunchtime at work. It might be deciding to cut out one episode of a series you are watching and dedicating that time to reading. But just commit to picking up the Bible and reading. And secondly, pray about reading the Bible. This may sound rather strange. After all, you don't pray when reading another book. But remember, this is no ordinary book. Pray. Pray that God would give you a desire to read it. Pray that he would give you insight to understand what you read. And pray that he would give you the ability to apply what you read to your life. And then lastly, submit to God as you read. The Bible's job is to correct and to build up, and this can only be done as you submit to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to rebuke and correct, to build up and encourage. And then for added measure, why don't you try and find someone to read the Bible with? Do this according to your schedule. It may be that you each read the Bible on your own and just meet up to discuss what you read. You may meet together once a week to physically read through the the next section of the Bible together. 
There is great encouragement that comes from reading the Bible with fellow believers. We are all on a boat. Our boats may be in different parts of the ocean. Some may be facing storms. Some may be in the calm. Some may simply be in darkness. But at some stage, our boats will get rocky. Dangers will abound. We will grow concerned and anxious. Don't wait until the storm arrives before preparing your heart for the storm. Allow the Bible to make your heart stormproof as it draws you closer to Him. And if you find yourself in a storm right now, know that there is a light that shines the assurance of hope that will endure beyond your current situation and into all eternity, and that that light can be found as you spend time in the precious Word of God. Let 2021 be the year you grab hold of God's Word and embed it into your heart. Let us pray. Lord God, as we reflect on what your word, the Bible, is, we are humbled to know that it is a reflection of who you are, that it is a window through which we come to know you. Lord, we pray that you would, through the Holy Spirit's work in our lives, draw us towards a deeper love for spending time in the Bible. We pray that you would place it on our hearts to spend time this year reading through its pages, and that as we do that, that you would embed its truths in our hearts, that you would use it to correct our thinking and mold us by it to be people who love you and seek to obey you by living out and teaching what it reveals to us about who you are. May 2021 be the year we get to grab hold of your word like never before. Amen. brings our time together to a close. Thank you for joining us today.